Buenas tardes. Bueno. Bueno. Buenas tardes. Ah, gracias por acompañarnos. Vamos a dar inicio a la sesión. Tenemos un poquito de problemas con I, el audio. Sorry, I, uh, it's, it's very, very noisy. I can't, I can't hear everything. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I can start in English if that's okay with everybody. Is that, is that okay? All right. Uh, great. So let's do this in English. See if, if we can work it out. All right. Well, uh, we are here to present a book called The Core of the Sun, El Núcleo del Sol, by Joana Sinisalo. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I am going to make a very brief introduction to the book, both the book and the author. Um, my first encounter with this book was because of this activity. And um, the first thing that called my mind was that it's described as weird finish, the genre of the book, which I couldn't quite understand. Mm, the first thing as I read the book uh, to me was that it's not weird at all, that it is very similar to the world um, in a sense that it is either something that I never lived but existed or something that I never got to see but is dangerously close to me. And um, it's kind of frightening. After um, I read the book, I described that I discovered, sorry, that um, it's just about the genre of the book. And it's a very well written book that I found really um, easy to read, but not in detriment to the way the book is written, but as, as a I am trying to say this as a way of actually complement the way it's written because you don't want to put it down. And, and that's, that's amazing to me. This is the story of a girl called Vera who is assigned a name and uh, a personality, basically, along with her name. Her new name is Vanna, and she has a sister. And they are basically pitted, to get pitted uh, against each other for the greater good, uh, or that's what they say, the greater good of, of the fin Finnish state. Um, she has to sort out a lot of situations, and I don't want to ruin the book for you, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you are going to find a lot of topics that are very close to home right now. You are going to find a little bit of feminism there. You are going to find problems with public health that are very close to what we live right now in Mexico. and uh, But it's done in a very peculiar way, way that allows us to take a look at the book and laugh and cry at the same time, because this is actually what we are living. Um, about the author, I will just read what's on the back of the book for lack of a better thing to do on my part. but. Joana Sinisalo is a Finnish author who is uh, internationally acclaimed. Her work is classified in something called Finnish weird because it defies any gender, in any genre in particular. She has won several um, literary awards, including the Finland Prize in 2000, the James Tripti Jr. Award in 2004, the Atorox seven times, and the Prometheus Award in 2017. She's also been nominated for the Nebula Award in 2009. Um, Joanna, welcome, and thank you for being here. And I am going to let other people speak right now because I've been speaking for too long. Th thank you very much, and <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you for having me here. <laughs> thank you. Um, anybody who wants to start the questions? Buenas tardes. ¿Me escuchan? Ah, perdón. Este, 
Bueno, primero que nada, perdón, eh, primero que nada muchas gracias por haber venido a México y por haber aceptado que nosotros como lectores presentemos un libro tuyo o de usted más bien, <risa> perdón. La verdad me, me gustó mucho, mucho su libro, es un libro muy interesante, más que nada porque habla mucho de los problemas que actualmente están en México, no, bueno nada más en México, supongo que en la mayoría de los países, pero hay algo que a mí me, me impactó mucho, de hecho les comentaba a los muchachos, hay una relación muy, muy fuerte entre dos hermanas, y, este, y bueno, yo al menos yo tengo una hermana también y es una menor. Este, me pegó mucho eso y me gustaría saber este, qué fue lo que le, le… fue el nombre, perdón. ¿Qué fue lo que le inspiró gracias, a poner como protagonistas o más bien como centrada el, el libro en dos hermanas? y no puede ser en algún romance como la mayoría de todos, en, más bien en por qué fue en dos hermanas. Uh, perhaps one reason uh, is that uh, I well, myself have two sisters, uh, I'm the youngest of, of uh, three, three girls and uh, we have all been born um, in very short uh, intervals, so um, I think that even the oldest of us doesn't remember the time when we all three were not there. So uh, we are like, uh, I think we were more like triplets than, than uh, sisters of different ages. And I noticed from a very young age, of course, that uh, there can be very deep love and very deep empathy and uh, a very deep um, uh, kind of um, 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 f a feeling of uh, uh, togetherness uh, in, in every situation, but also when you are uh, living life with uh, for example a teenage girl who is uh, as a teenage girl yourself and, and uh, having all that kind of problems when you ha have a little crush for the some boy, for example, or when you want to borrow her skirt and she <laughs> doesn't want to give it, and, and, uh, uh, and when she uh, 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 steals your lipstick and ruins it and everything like that. Uh, so I, I know something about sisterly love, but I know all those, all, all, also I know something about um, sibling rivalry. And, and I, I started to think that uh, could that kind of re relationship still uh, be a loving relationship if those two girls would be very different uh, as characters and even on very, very different uh, intellect intellectual level. And um, that, that uh, kind of relationship was very working very well with my, uh, the, the theme of my book where uh, uh, the ideal of the society is that uh, women are very dumb and they are not uh, interested in uh, anything uh, outside home and uh, outside uh, being, being uh, beautiful. And what happens if we are not beautiful? <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, nothing happens for us. All right, uh, Ricard, do you, do you have a question? Bueno, a mi en, a mi en lo, <laughs> particular me gustó mucho su libro, su historia, el cómo la planteó, o sea, este, como que sí se trataron diferentes aspectos que sí se viven realmente y me gustó mucho cómo se fue llevando el tema del machismo, este, el, en esta sociedad se plantea lo que las mujeres que no 
valen nada y en las que se les tiene que este como seleccionar si sirven o si no sirven para la casa, para el hogar o así y me gustó mucho. Solo que me planteé una duda desde el inicio que usted usó el término de Eloy y Morlock como para separarlas y en su libro se plantea que se salió de um, una terminología que usaba web entonces yo le quiero preguntar que si es fan fan de Wells o solo lo puso por ponerlo o porque esas terminologías I wanted to use these uh, H.E. Wells uh, terms, Eloise and Morlocks, uh, because they are, they are directly uh, pinched from uh, his novel, The Time Machine. And uh, in that book, uh, Wells, who was actually a very, very keen um, writer to uh, uh, find uh, out uh, so social, uh, so societal uh, uh, developments and uh, and uh, so, so he wanted to do societal cri uh, critics uh, whenever ever he could and uh, uh, everyone who has heard about the time machine book uh, thinks that it's about time machines But actually it's not uh, it's uh, about uh, the humanity splitting apart and uh, in the time machine The time machine is only a way to uh, illuminate that kind of splitting. Uh, Wells lived in that ki uh, kind of time when the industrialization has uh, started to uh, thrive very strongly and uh, <coughs> the first time in the uh, history of uh, Western world there was a uh, like two very, very different cases of people. Uh, there were uh, those uh, people who went uh, to the factories and uh, were very dirty and uh, uh, tended machines there night and uh, day along. And then there were those rich people who owned the factories and they uh, spent their time in, in uh, leisure and uh, They uh, had parties and, and beautiful clothes, and, and they really didn't uh, do anything, uh, let's say, uh, manual work. And um, of course, there have been before uh, higher classes and, and uh, lower classes, but uh, well, somehow noticed that this new trend was splitting the uh, people apart even more strongly than ever before, and he wanted to write a story about what if this kind of splitting could go forward uh, like tens of thousands of years. And he sent in that time machine his uh, character to see uh, the world in after 80,000 years. And there lived uh, Morlocks who were living underground and they were tending machines and they were uh, troll-like and they were ugly and uh, Um, uh, those people that uh, this Eloys were living uh, overground and they were beautiful and uh, they were dancing and singing all, all days and and they have kind of uh, kind of uh, were worthless but beautiful life. But in the book, those uh, Eloys uh, were were paying a, <laughs> a big Uh, price for their uh, leisurely uh, lifestyle because the Morlocks were eating them afterwards uh, because the Morlocks were ke keeping the uh, society uh, going around. And uh, I just took those two uh, terms because I wanted to show that if we really would like uh, women to be stupid and just concentra concentrate to be at home, we were creating Same, case, same kind of uh, society where, where uh, are, are those people even in the same species anymore? Like, like uh, in, in the future, the, there are 
uh, we have split uh, humanity apart, and uh, and uh, those uh, two halves are, are men and women. Okay. Um, to give a little context on all of this, because I'm not sure that uh, we have all read the book, we have as the center of the book a character, like I explained, called uh, Vera. And she has a sister who, I her name is, um, oh, it's slipped on my mind. Ma thanks. <laughs> all right. Uh, the idea is that these two uh, people, to me, are kind of like the same person. They are they are uh, a coin, but different sides of that coin. And society has um, put them against each other because one is the Morlock and the other is the the alloy, right? Um, in your mind, are these two people the the same person who has forced to? separate in a sense in order to survive this world that has been created for them? Uh, yeah, yes, in, in a way I can, I can uh, see it that way, uh, um, that they are kind of two sides of the same person. But perhaps I thought a little bit more uh, on that way that uh, I see every day in the modern world uh, that women also make choices with kind, which kind of uh, women they want to be. And uh, in this, my story, uh, there, are no, there really are not choices to make. You, you are, you are uh, told if, uh, if you are which, which one you are. But uh, when we are going to follow that kind of uh, idea, idea of the ideal woman, that is uh, always um, very, uh, you know, make very well made up and and takes care of her hair and and uh, use um, fashionable dresses and uh, clothes and I, I was kind of carnivalizing this kind of, of uh, uh, womanhood in, in the book, uh, but that they are like like uh, having. Uh, very, very fierce competition with each other. Uh, how how long their artificial nails are, or how long are their artificial uh, eyelashes, and <laughs> and uh, uh, how um, no, how bright their lipstick uh, is, and uh, but everything they do is just to uh, attract men, and it, it's the only purpose in their life to get married. And when I think about this kind of uh, woman, uh, it's not so very far from uh, uh, some women from, from the past years and, and even some, uh, some women uh, from today, yes. And Thank I think that the choice I, <laughs> I mentioned was, is, is this, uh, are you uh, uh, using the better half of your life, just primping up yourself? Or, or have you perhaps something else more, more intelligent things to do? Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Estábamos hablando hace un momento. No, sí, no. Estábamos platicando hace un rato. Entonces, pues, hacerlo más serio. Hay alguien. I told him that we were talking on a moment ago, and uh, I'm going to make the same question that my wife made, because I make a lot of questions all the time. Come on, Hugo. Todo el mundo, ya, ya me escuchas. So, the first question, Finland, Cuba, why Finland, Cuba? I mean, there's no internet, everything is prohibited, there are no mobile phones, no cell phones, uh, the books, I mean, she cannot read a book because you are a, uh, no, the model can read books. Oh, an alloy. And Vera, she can read books, she's beautiful. Um, I mean, why? Where do you take that idea? I mean, everything is prohibited. Everything is, uh, there is nothing, I mean. Okay, there are two reasons. Uh, 
the one reason is that um, uh, if you really form that kind of society where uh, half of the population are like second class citizens who are not allowed to have a, a proper profession, they are not allowed to have a proper education, that they are only uh, to be there to uh, uh, breed and, and uh, take care of home. I think that kind of society makes very, very soon kind of, a, uh, it gets kind of developing country. It, it's, uh, uh, there is half of the workforce is, is not in use. There has to be some, some uh, reasons for that. But of course, this is kind, kind of uh, totalitarian society, so of course they are not very keen to have internet or <laughs> mobile phones because they want to keep a very keen eye on the citizens. Um, but also everything is prohibited is kind of carnivalization of the idea that of course the modern Western countries are paying more and more attention to uh, um, what kind of uh, habits uh, the citizens have. For example, in Finland we have very good uh, public uh, health care. And if you are smoking or drinking e in excess or uh, if overeating uh, very uh, unhealthy foods, uh, you are still uh, taking care of uh, with, with, with public money. So um, it, 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 it's, it's a question about uh, <laughs> national budget, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and uh, I, I know that there is a thing called uh, human uh, liberty and, and uh, people have free uh, will to do, to do things. But uh, also we all we understand very clearly that uh, you don't sell uh, alcohol to minors or you don't uh, sell tobacco to uh, five years old. So uh, there is kind of, you know, a border where we, are, where we, we understand when people are, when things are, are prohibited from people, but, th but then, th then we cross the line when we think this is ridiculous, that, that uh, you can't control people like that. The quest question is where do you draw the line? And, and this is a very good question, and, and uh, so that's why it is, is, is in the book. <laughs> I mean, I really like the book. I really like the space, how do you describe it, and everything like that. But um, I'm going to make a question to them in the Spanish and then to you in English. I asked them about the Chile. Mm -hmm. I understood as much. <laughs> Why did Chile have to be a drug? <laughs> uh -huh. mm, okay, I could say perhaps first that, uh, like, like I were in an AA uh, meeting, my name is Johanna and I'm a capsizing addict. <laughs> well, uh, actually, this. Uh, was a joke, but uh, it's not so f f far from truth because I, I really love hot chilies. Uh, I have experimented uh, with them a long time, and I really, really uh, love them. I, lo uh, I love them. Uh, I, li I need them more and more because my tolerance has gotten higher during years. And um, and if you know anything about brain chemistry, uh, you should know that uh, that. Uh, they actually, they are a drug. Uh, they really uh, release endorphins in, in your brain. So if I were uh, this kind of uh, government who, which is pr prohibiting everything that has something to do with your neurochemicals, <laughs> you, of course they would uh, prohibit uh, chili too. Uh, but of course in the book you can uh, get some hints uh, why it really is, is forbidden. Uh, but uh, I, I really loved this idea of uh, Chile being uh, considered as a, as a dangerous, uh, illegal drug because it was so funny to write it. Like, like how they are smug people are smuggling jalapenos from the <laughs> West and other <laughs> countries or, or how they are dealing uh, you know, little packs of uh, crushed chili <laughs> in, in the dark parks. 
and, and so on and so on. Um, and uh, uh, I, I think that, uh, for, for me, for example, I, I think that the Chile uh, really fills all the definitions of, of uh, uh, drug because I enjoy taking it. I need every day <laughs> bigger and bigger portions of it. <laughs> and I, I think I'm deeply addicted. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's very interesting. I am not, which is really strange because uh, I, I don't like. Um, well, I do enjoy it, but to me, it's just too much. Actually, when you were describing uh, what she feels when she eats certain types of of chilies, um, I I went like, this is exactly why I, what I feel. But I have no idea why would anybody want to go through <laughs> that torture. <laughs> And for Mexican, this is really strange, but I find it really weird, especially here in Jalisco. When we are hungover, we go and have a torta ahogada and until it burns. And people are crying and sweating and blowing their nose, mm -hmm. and they're still enjoying it. Yeah, a yeah. Lot. This and it's I have no idea yeah, why. Yeah, it's exactly the same with me. With <laughs> I, yeah. All right. Um, I have another question regarding that. The Regarding this idea um, that Vera is a, is, a, is a drug addict, she really enjoys the high that it brings her to eat this type of, of, um, of food. But she actually describes everything in a way that she can, she's, she's synesthetic, right? She has synesthesia. So it means that when she eats something, she can describe it in colors when she uh, feels that somebody is feeling something else, she can smell how someone is feeling something. So if someone is angry, she smells it. If she tries some food, she actually describes it in terms of other things, music, um, colors, letters, all these things. Uh, where th did that come from? And um, how do you decide who smells like what when they are <laughs> feeling something? <laughs> uh, well, ac actually, that uh, idea from a synesthetic as a uh, mind character, it g came very easily because I, I'm a little bit of synesthetic myself. Not, not that much but as, as uh, my character is, but I know uh, how, it, how it feels. And uh, uh, why she did... Uh, uh, describe, uh, for example, uh, chili heat and chili taste with musical terms was because I was uh, experimenting with some chilies with my husband and we really didn't find the right words. And then we uh, got this idea that, okay, this heat, uh, and when it's in the, the tip of your tongue, it, it's shrill heat. And when uh, some kind of like, like I think uh, Chipotle has kind of bass sound uh, heat, very uh, rumbling and uh, deep. And <laughs> it, it just started that way, that, uh, OK, uh, you, if you can uh, describe chili heat with, with music terms, you can do some, some other, other things, too. And uh, I, I think that when I chose those um, mood smells, mm -hmm. so to speak, uh, I think that uh, I perhaps thought them as like, uh, uh, in that uh, scale, uh, like uh, mm, pleasant, unpleasant, okay. and uh, so if you, if she thought that this was a pleasant attitude mm -hmm. or mood, she uh, smelled it as uh, something pleasant, and and mm -hmm. and uh, vice versa. Okay, thank you. Do you think or not? Una pregunta más y consiste en que los personajes principales cuando se mudaron a Finlandia tuvieron que cambiarse de sus nombres. Por ejemplo, Vera ya se tuvo que llamar Vana y mi pregunta es que por qué, o sea, tuvieron que como que cambiar sus nombres. 
if you read this book very carefully, you see that every woman, every ELO woman, uh, has a name that uh, ends with Anna. And uh, I think that one of the most uh, strong and effective ways of control uh, in society is to prevent a person to keep their own identity. And when you use this kind of, you know, uh, uh, this, 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 this A-N-N-A uh, ending in every Eloy's name is, is kind of, uh, it's a sign that uh, they are, uh, below, they, they belong to one, this one group, this one group of second class citizens. And that's why they had to change their names when they came to Finland. And um, there was also a little pun in there because in Finnish, uh, A N N A, Anna, it's, uh, it's a girl's name, but it's also an imperative of the word uh, Anta, to give. So to s when you say Anna, it's also give me, give me, give me. So they are like this ignited to give okay. and nothing else. Yeah. All right. um, as, as an extra part of that question, before I let you go, sorry, there it says that the R is only for, for boys, for men. Yes. Why? <laughs> Because it's such a masculine letter. Este, bueno, yo realmente ahorita no es una pregunta. Bueno, sí es una pregunta, uh, pero también quiero hacer una observación. Hay algo que me, me gustó mucho de su libro, aparte de toda la historia, sino que de, de lo que más me gustó fue que a pesar de que era un libro utópico, me parece ser utópico, este, me hizo investigar muchas cosas <risa> que realmente le comentaba yo a mis, a mis compañeros, que habían cosas que yo pensaba que no existían, por ejemplo, um, donde describe que hubo un una investigación de, de zorros para domesticarlos, este, yo dije, mmm, bueno, ok, oh, es ser parte de la historia que quiere contar, pero cuando me, me metí así a internet y, y lo busqué así como tal el nombre, dije, ay, sí existe, <risa> y, este, y eso fue lo que más me gustó mucho de, de, del, del contenido de su libro, que a pesar de que habían cosas muy… Este, mmm, cambiantes en la, en la naturaleza, habían cosas que sí existían y, y me hizo investigar varias cosas como el, eh, habían de guindillas, yo realmente en mi… o guindillas, o guindillas no sé cómo se diga, este, no, no, sabía, no sabía que existían la verdad, yo en mi ignorancia pensaba que solamente existía el Chile, pero aquí en México, <risa> que también no me gusta mucho que digamos, ¿verdad? Este, la verdad… Hay, hay algo que sí me, me impactó mucho del libro, que es una parte del final, que realmente sí lloré, lloré en el final y, y no lo voy a decir, sí, claro, no lo voy a decir, no lo voy a decir, <risa> por personas que no lo han leído, claro. Este, ah, ah, sí, claro, léanlo, es muy bueno. Ah, ¿Qué fue lo que el, el, ha ah, 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 pensado continuar con la historia de, de Vanna, como una secuela o, o no sé, algún anexo? Bueno, well, actually I haven't. Uh, but, but it's not, never say never, I, I mean, it, it could be uh, interesting. I, my first book when I wrote it and it was got very, very good, uh, uh, critics and, and uh, several awards. Uh, I, uh, everyone, uh, almost everyone asked me when we are going to have the sequel and I said, uh, well, well, perhaps not a direct sequel, but I could return to this particular world and, and perhaps write another story from, from with different characters. Uh, perhaps that kind of uh, uh, a sequel idea could be possible. For example, like what, what would this uh, world uh, look like 
50 years from now? Or what kind of word it was when it was uh, in the process of, of uh, coming true? So uh, when, when every, uh, well, so like, I, like this, these roles were not uh, yet uh, uh, come like that, like uh, everyday uh, things, but, but they were still in process. That kind of um, ideas I could, could really have. Mm, maybe it's going to be a trouble making this question because I don't want to hurt no one. But um, I think here in Mexico we are very machistas, even the women. And um, how do you handle the machismo in Finland? I mean, there is a lot in the book. Mm. Or is it just fiction? <laughs> uh, I think that we have our deal of machismo in, in Finland too, but we also have very strong women who have uh, been uh, fighting the machismo <laughs> of their lives. Um, the Finnish women are pretty, pretty uh, independent. They are well educated, and, and uh, almost all of them are, are pro working professionally somewhere. So uh, they have much more tools to uh, deal with machismo because they don't uh, uh, they don't let uh, them uh, be to be treated like uh, patronizingly. Mm -hmm. So, um, but of course, uh, by one of the reasons why I wrote this book is that the that uh, also in Finland. Um, which has always been very, very equal uh, country when we, uh, especially when we considered uh, the, the gender equality. There has uh, risen that kind of uh, male activists. Uh, they are quite a small group, but they are very, very loud. So. Uh, um, th there's those people who tell that feminism has gone too far and we women should be put back to their places, to their places, <laughs> uh, which means actually second class citizens. And uh, I'm so infuriated <laughs> by, by this trend uh, because uh, I don't think that uh, taking back steps in, in the gender equality would be any good uh, thing the male, uh, for the male uh, citizens uh, either. I, I mean that, for example, one of the mm, main goals of feminism is that we were equal, and, and may, men are not equal with, with women in uh, very many, several, uh, very serious things, like, for example, if a couple is getting the divorce, it's so very common that, that the uh, mother is getting the, uh, the, the, the children. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, only uh, the guys have to go to the army. Uh, the girls can also go to the army, but they don't have to. It's voluntary, yeah, if they want, yeah. It, it, it's not the same thing. And, 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 and so, uh, it, in here, it's yeah, OK, yeah, sure. great. But I, I mean that. Uh, if if uh, they really <laughs> if those machismo people really want to like hold uh, those e even those uh, those uh, uh, characteristics of machismo that that are actually bad for them and their gender, I, I don't understand that. I mean, sorry. I mean, hola, bueno. Um, I ask it because uh, I am divorced and she's my daughter. Uh, she's always with me all the time also. But uh, I think it is a, uh, here in Mexico, there is a lot of machismo too. And um, in the book, it's a very strong idea, a very, very strong. In fact, the women have to be controlled by it. And, um, and that's it. <laughs> there is something actually that just caught my mind. Um, the relate, that is, that is, briefly explored on, but I kind of wish you would have gone further into that. So my question is, there is a relationship with uh, the idea of sex 
and sex as a, as a serving thing for men mm -hmm. and only for them to enjoy. But also as a crucial part of Eloy's um, staying with their husbands. We know that sex is something very human, but also very, it's kind of like currency in mm -hmm. a sense, mm -hmm. yes? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it touches on power a lot. Yeah. Um, my idea is, can you elaborate a little bit further on what you thought on those ideas of, of sex f uh, for, for these classes or subspecies of, yeah. of humans? Well, um, I think that the, uh, the main question was uh, in, in the whole book of creating morals and illoys and, and all this kind of uh, social evolution was that uh, I was playing with that idea that if, uh, that, that, and uh, so this, uh, with this I go back to this and uh, why everything is forbidden. And this uh, is a very clever uh, scenario when you forbid alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, uh, refined sugar, um, about everything that uh, uh, gives you pleasure, but you s leave sexual pleasure, mm -hmm. and then you make it as a co commodity. So uh, uh, in this society, uh, the women are trained uh, actually to offer them to guys, the guys th th don't have to fight. Uh, I mean, uh, they don't have to uh, uh, have to fight for women, or they don't, don't even have need to uh, put any effort mm -hmm. uh, to that. So, uh, I, I think that uh, this kind of society is uh, it, it could be a utopia for very very many. <laughs> guys, <Yes. laughs> but it could be a dystopia for a very for women. Uh, for most women. Yes, yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, true, and and sadly, it's not so far from our reality. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sadly. Um, okay, thank you very much. Uh, la carta que tengo aquí dice que tenemos poco tiempo. Hay alguna pregunta para la autora por parte del público? No questions. How about us at the table? Do you have an, any more questions? Well, <laughs> well, I, well, I have to to uh, apologize because uh, I, I think that my my English was was <laughs> particularly bad today. Oh, I, no. I I'm I'm a little bit jet lagged and uh, I I th I think that I forgot some very very basic words when I was talking. So sorry about that. But uh, you have to be very patient and a very nice audience. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Thank you. Muchas gracias a todos por acompañarnos, a mis compañeros de la mesa y compren el libro de verdad, es muy bueno, a lo mejor no hicimos un trabajo espectacular, eh, eh, creo que la mayoría de nosotros es la primera vez en, en este tipo de, de paneles, pero eh, de verdad es un libro que vale la pena leer, es un libro que describe una distopia no tan alejada de lo que vivimos, eh, es un libro que de repente no te esperas, está basado en, en la historia, eh, está basado como si hubiera un punto de inflexión donde la historia cambia y existe un mundo hiper, hiper machista eh, del que no sospechamos, pero que a veces vivimos y mientras tanto te hace reír y te hace reflexionar acerca de temas de salud pública y temas también eh, de drogas, porque como ya dijimos, las, las guindillas o los chiles son la droga del lugar. Entonces vale la pena. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos. Thank you very much.